I was sitting upstairs about literally 15 minutes ago and I was thinking about Caleb's 53, Michael Andrews 53. I was thinking about the entire field and I was thought to myself, why don't I go down and have a look at it? Then I started to look at it about 10 minutes ago. I started to take some notes and then I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put up an analysis, a race analysis of this 53. I think there's some interesting things here, really important things to learn it's a 50, right? It's over in 21 seconds. So things happen quick. But uh, Caleb and Michael and the guys in the, in the field, Ryan Held, they do a great job. It's a, it's a great race, really fast at the end of a meet, sitting around the end of a five-day meet to go this fast, but especially Caleb. So I'm going to put my attention here and uh, we can extrapolate from that, right? So I took out the watch, right? The old tested watch and and I looked at the video and I tried to get as accurate as I could. It's not precise, okay, but it's pretty close. So what I came up with was Caleb gets his usual start. 10 out of 10 times, Caleb's going to hit this thing and it's going to be pretty damn good. And honestly, this is his game changer. This is where he wins the race. And, I, and I'll explain more about that in a second. But at the 15 meter mark, I had him at about 4.7 on the watch. I mean, 4.7, just to give you some perspective, okay, what I was actually doing here is I was looking at my charts as well. And I went to my charts and I've got these, I've got these Queensland Academy of Sports uh, charts, which give me a breakdown on how fast uh, you have to be at certain parts of the race, right? And Caleb at the 15 meter mark is under 20 seconds. He's at that pace. He's under 20 seconds, okay, at the 15 meter mark. Now, from here, he progressively gets a little bit slower. And this is where you win a 50 freestyle, by the way. It's the person that actually slows down the least. At the 25-meter mark, I had Caleb at 9.2. It's blazing fast, okay? 9.2. He's under 20.2 pace, still at the 25. Under 20.2 pace. Think about that. At the 35-meter mark on the, on the video... Not precise, but pretty damn close. I had him at 13.8. He's still under 20.6 pace, okay? Keep in mind here, the world record is 20.91. At the 35-meter mark, Caleb is under 20.6 pace, okay? He's still blazing. He loses a lot of his ground here, basically, in the last 15 meters. Or the swim gets away from him. Now, I'm not exactly sure how they extrapolate these charts, okay? But they've always been fairly accurate for me. Uh, I've always taken these charts and really used them to um, set my training. So what I actually did here also too is I, I set up some photos. So the first photo you're going to see here is the, the 15 meter mark. I know, actually, sorry, that's the breakout, which is pretty close to the 15 meter mark. But that's the breakout. You can see Caleb is about a, a head length ahead of Michael Andrew. What's a head length? I'm, Basically, Michael Andrews' head is basically sitting under Caleb Dressel's armpit. So he's about this much ahead of him, plus his arm length, right? Okay. So Michael's, Michael's head sitting here, Caleb's head sitting here. And he maintains that for the whole race, okay? Caleb gets a head length on him. Watch this. At the 25-meter mark, really difficult to tell. But if you watch the video back, come on, get out of there. Where are you? Yeah, there. Let's do that. He's still about a head length. Okay, at the 35 meter mark, oh, went the wrong way on that. No, I didn't get the 35 meter mark because they didn't really have it great on the video. But at the end, you can see the end here. Caleb's touching the wall. Michael Andrew is still maintaining about that head length difference. Okay, so what does that mean? Caleb wins the race in the first 15 meters. And then all he does is maintain speed at the highest level, but he doesn't swim faster than Michael Andrew necessarily. He doesn't get ahead of him. He doesn't fall back. He doesn't lose ground, but he doesn't gain ground. Everything Caleb gains is in the first 15 meters in the breakout. Okay. So what does he do? He goes six dolphin kicks here and his dolphin kicks are considerably better than what I've seen the rest of the meet. Here he's actually holding water. They're big and powerful and fluid. To me, there was a mentality switch in a way here with Caleb. And I think it showed at the end. And even in maybe his uh, post-race interviews, there was a certain confidence by the time he swam this race and there was a certain um, 
will to get this thing done. You know, obviously uh, what I heard him say is that he wanted to continue this trend of Florida winning every freestyle event. And he's obviously gone onto his social media and, and bragged about it. He's very proud of it, which he should be, right? They win every freestyle race from the 1500 to the, to well, the 50 to the 1500 on the men's side of things. Came pretty close on the women's too, I guess. Um, and and uh, that was something that was, you know, obviously inspiring Caleb. He was a different man. He had been, and you can see it in his dolphin kicks. He looks fluid. He's holding water. And maybe with a little rest throughout the meet, by the time he got to this race, he's feeling a little bit better. He goes directly straight into his straight arm. He breaks out perfectly clean, flat. All right. Everything's going forward in his breakhead. He doesn't pop up on his breakhead, even in slow motion. There's no pop. It's forward. And he immediately shifts his shoulders, swings his arms, and launches into that straight arm on the right side. I'm going to get this right this time. He gets his first stroke. His breakout stroke is on the right side. Okay. And he goes straight into a straight arm. He's got a lot of rotation in his shoulders here, but he's very flat in his hips. If you notice him, he's locked his hips in very little rotation here in the hips. All the rotation is coming from the upper body. His head is locked in. Okay. He's, he's, there's no movement in the head. This is very important to fast swimming, okay? You don't want up and down movement. You don't want side to side movement. You want the head to be fixed. And when your head is fixed, your body line can be fixed. Your rotation is obviously there. He's getting those arms up and over. And what I talk about here is keeping the armpits dry, right? He's not dragging water like he, like he may have in the past in some of his races. He's coming up and over the water. He's keeping that armpit dry and he's getting over the top. Very Fred Brusquet like, okay? He's swimming more and more like Fred Brusquet every time I watch him now. And I, that's, a, that's a model to copy because Fred's gone 20.9, you know, first man to break 21 seconds actually. And he looks very much like Fred Brusquet. Keeping those armpits dry, um, flat hips, like I said. Um, no drop or movement in the head position. He finishes actually on his left arm. He comes over, he drives in on the left arm, and it's a. Uh, I thought he could have actually maybe taken another stroke, and he decided not to, which was fine because by the time he shifted and rolled, all he had to do was reach and touch by that stage. So it was actually a pretty damn good touch, very long, very effective. Um, and that's it. I mean, it's 21 seconds, like I talk about, but the race is won for Caleb in. Well, it's, 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 right. it's one everywhere. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's the fastest man in the water, but he doesn't swim faster than Michael Andrew. He beats him on the first 15 meters. Now, you might think that's controversial to say. Go and look at the video and you tell me. If I'm, if I'm getting it wrong, have your opinion. He gets him on the first 15 meters and he maintains his speed better than anyone in the race, but he maintains it and he wins by head length. And that's the race. And listen, 21-2 is moving. It's quick, guys. Really, really quick. I've coached a lot of guys to swim this race. Studied it for many years. And uh, to swim that 21-2, the way he was, his meet was going, his meet wasn't, uh, you know, look, we, we can be very judgmental. 50.0 in the, in the fly, who wouldn't want to do that? 47 in the 100 free, who wouldn't want to do that? But to his standards, and I think by the way he was even reacting after some of his swims, he wasn't particularly happy. 21-2 is a good swim, and it puts him right in the ballpark to break this world record when he does feel better. He is fully tapered. And um, he look, look, Michael Andrews' swim was brilliant too. If he could just figure out maybe that first 15 meters where he could, he could launch into his breakout cycle at the same time as as um, Caleb, maybe we see both these guys fighting for a world record. That's not to say there aren't other guys in the, in the conversation here for sure, but um, really good swim by those guys. And uh, I think it's going to be an interesting one at the world championships. I'll post my notes because I do have notes. I'll post my notes on uh, Instagram. You guys can check it out. Let me know what you think. We individualize training in the pool, so why not individualize your nutrition? Erica Biney of Biney Wellness Building will help you and your swimmers get exactly what each athlete needs through genetic testing and personalized nutrition plans. So stop guessing what you should and shouldn't be putting into your body.
athletes within a few weeks have noticed they're recovering faster because they're fueling their body with what they need and staying away from what their body hates. Erica understands swimming. She gets it. She's worked with over 20 Olympians, including the fastest man in the world, Caleb Dressel. Group discounts are available, so go to Biney Wellness Building and get in touch with Erica today. That's Biney, B-E-I-N-E, wellnessbuilding.net. 